such a wonderful God today. We just thank God for being here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God once again for Melanie that came and supported us yesterday. Amen. 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 I appreciate you coming out to support us uh, at the Gulf Coast Fellowship. And Melanie, y'all came out in masses. You know, y'all came out, y'all came out, and you supported your pastor. Y'all didn't just go across the bay. You didn't go to over there at Point. You went all the way to Gulf Point. And I appreciate you coming, amen, taking out your time. Amen. We're going to really get, get ready to get into the word of God today. Amen. Let's go to the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Dealing with by the spirit, the importance of being led and doing things by the Holy Ghost. The importance of being led and doing things by the spirit. I remember... I remember this specifically when I was praying for a wife and I met Mama Jane okay. and she was nice enough to fix me lunch one day. Wow. At noon day I went by her house and I was eating lunch. I was going to church with her and visiting her and they, their church was on a consecration so I was on, so, but I went on a consecration but she was nice enough to fix me lunch. She wasn't eating but she fixed me lunch. And the Spirit said, that's going to be your wife. No, that, we, that was after the consecration. That was after the consecration. And the Spirit said, she's going to be your wife. And I said, what? I want lusting after her? She can find that. I don't even want that. <laughs> she was beautiful and all that, but I wasn't lusting after her. I looked at her as being a friend. Just a nice young lady I could talk to. Just to pass the time until I found somebody else. Because I looked at her as being a child. Can I, can I keep it real and shame the devil? But the Spirit said, that's going to be your wife. So, of course, I rejected it initially. I said, that must be my flesh talking. Maybe because I'm just hungry and need something to eat. And I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't know. I, I might be in the flesh. And I didn't accept it as being the will of God. But it was God talking. And I found out that I have been blessed exceedingly because I listened to the Spirit of God. If any of you plan on marrying, you better make sure the Spirit is talking to you. Oh, come on. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. If you plan on doing anything, you better make sure the spirit yeah. is talking to you. Because your flesh can talk to you too. Did you not know your flesh will try to imitate the voice of God? Did you not know there's angels out there, there's demons out there that will try to imitate the voice of God? <laughs> so having the Holy Ghost is not just speaking in tongues only. My Holy Ghost is more important than speaking in tongues. Amen. I appreciate the tongues. I appreciate the shout. I appreciate how it shakes me. Amen. But baby, the Holy Ghost is much more valuable than that. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. You better make sure God is talking to you about certain sins. And if God ain't talking, you better find out what's talking. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Zechariah chapter number 4, verse 6. God, we ask that you open our eyes as we open up the word of God. Give us revelation knowledge. Let it flow like a river. But mainly, God, give us an understanding of your word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Zechariah 4, and verse 6 says... Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord. Unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. So that means that we need to tap into the spirit of God. Some things will pop, they'll come. 
probably need to let, let me add this to it. I love Mama J. And I appreciate God bless me to marry Mama J. I don't want nobody to think that I, I'm grateful. Hallelujah. Because I don't believe I'd probably be doing what I'm doing now if I wasn't married to the right person. Don't look at me like that. You marry the wrong person, you hook up with the wrong person, your call is going to be put on the back burner. Everything that God got is going to be tested. So, hallelujah. Then he answered and said, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord. I look back on some of the some of the tapes that we had, some of the praise services that we had, and I know of the Holy Ghost. Y'all know I can bang on the keyboard a little bit. I can I can play on them black keys. But I listened to some of that music. I said, that was the Holy Ghost. That wasn't just me playing. That was the anointing of God. I couldn't make the keyboard sound like that. I totally sometimes depended on the anointing of God. And God would have, what key you paying? I don't know what that sound on. Right. I don't know what key I'm in. Don't ask me, I don't know what key. Amen. But it came across anointing. The drum sound anointing. The praise sound anointing. The yeah, man even sounded anointing. Sounded like everybody was operating in unison. Amen. Because we was depending on the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to start depending on the Spirit. Somebody making them decisions in the flesh and the Lord is the way. Numbers chapter number 11. And see, I look at this and I think, let me let y'all know something about us as pastors and as leaders. Sometimes we create a codependency upon, upon the people of God. We create a spirit of dependency upon that's how some men of God and that's how some women of God especially those that have a prophetic call and I, see when they create that dependency upon them for, for to be a channel of conduit to God then they got you because you gotta come to me to get a word you gotta come to me and get God you gotta come to me and be led but my God don't want it that way he wants you to be able to hear from God yourself. That's why it's important for you to have the Holy Ghost yourself. If your pastor dies, if your bishop dies, if your apostle dies, how are you going to hear from God? I feel so sorry for those people that's into a man, they hooked up, wrapped up, tied in a man. What happens when a man dies? One woman would not even let me lay off. She needs the Holy Ghost. And at that time, me and my wife prayed. People getting hold God. I said, let you let me and my wife pray for you. I'm waiting for my pastor to come to town. Wait, my Baby, last I checked, you still ain't got no Holy Ghost. That's been years. Wow. See, because your faith is in your pastor. And unless your pastor pray for you, you can't get touched. Now I know, I know, oh, okay, I'm here somebody, I just stepped up somewhere, somebody feet, daddy. Well, Pastor, I do want you to pray for me only. That ain't no God. Jesus. See, if one of these ministers can't live nothing and pray for you, something wrong with you. It ain't with them, pray the Lord. There's something wrong with them and they can't live it. Come on, Pastor. Okay. Yeah. I gotta let Lady Joan pray for me before I get a touch. Something wrong with your spirit. I gotta let Providence count and pray with me before I get into something wrong with you. That's right. That's right. But last I checked, we all got the Holy Ghost. And you don't need Pastor to pray with you. You don't need Mama J to pray with you. You don't need Miller to G to pray with you. Yo, hallelujah. Come on. Come on, Come on, Jesus. It's the truth. I'm telling you, I know how people are. I'm going to wait in line until that, that right person called me. Come on, come on, Pastor. I know they're anointed. Come on. Them over there, I don't know. Let's go to the Word. Numbers chapter number 10, number 11. And verse 26. What you're doing is telling the Holy Ghost who you were to work through. You don't want to get the knee, baby. Come on, Pastor. Let's go to the Word. Numbers chapter number 11. And verse number 26. That's why it's important to have the Holy Ghost, saints. 
is important to be led by the Spirit. Amen? Are we there yet? Numbers chapter 11 and verse 26, and the Word of God reads as follows. And, um, and it says this. Now, I mean, I'm going to back up just a little bit. And around about verse number 20, um, verse number 25. And the Lord came down in the cloud and spake unto, and spake unto him, talking about the Moses, and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 men, 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. And there remained two men in the camp. The name of one was Eldad, and the name of the other was Medad. And the spirit rested upon them, and there was a them that was written that was supposed to be there. Have you ever met somebody that was supposed to be there? You were there, praise the Lord, but you didn't make it, but God still bless you anyway. But when I went not out unto the cabinet, and they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Hey, old dad and me, dad, do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, Moses, and one, one of his understudies, one of the young men and elders said, My Lord Moses, forbid them, because they show a lot of honor. They show a lot of honor. And sometimes it is out of order. And I'm going to tell y'all, if I see anybody out of here, I'm going to be the one to correct you in the house of God. Yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah. I love everybody, but I'm not going to let anything fly in now. <laughs> I try not to rebuke you publicly unless it's absolutely, absolutely, positively necessary to rebuke yeah. you publicly. Yeah. Yeah. But if you get out of order, I'm going to let you know. I'm sure I'm going to let you know. Sure as my name is Barry Jones Sr., I'm going to let you know. I might do it with a smile on my face. Child, you know you just out all the two left shoes. <laughs> Very seldom I'm going to rebuke you all. But see, even though it looked like they was out of all, God still was with it. Ooh. Because it was God that made it. It wasn't them making themselves out of all. Here we go. It wasn't them making themselves out of all. It was the Spirit of God that chose to rest upon them wherever he wanted to rest upon them. Yeah. See, it would have been different if they were doing that on their own. No, no, no. It said the Spirit rested upon them and they prophesied inside the camp. Amen. 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 And the Bible say, and Joshua the son of Nun told him, Lord forbid, the verse 29, and Moses said unto him, if it's that for my sake. <laughs> First of all, he said you envy him. Wait a minute. Joshua was the next leader in Israel. He was the next main person. And Moses called him out. Moses said, you envy him. Wow. That didn't stop him to be in the next leader, but he said, you envy him. Listen to me. When God is moving in the camp, <coughs> don't none of y'all envy know how God is moving. You need to get your spirit right. If you envy how God is moving, you need to check yourself. And Moses said unto him, if it's death for my sake, would God that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon all of them. In other words, God wanted so that you ain't got to run to Moses all the time and get a word from the Lord. Moses said, if you hear me for my sake, God want all of y'all to be prophets. God want all of y'all to have the spirit of God. This ain't just for the holy people. This ain't no hallelujah. This ain't just for the Pentecostals to have a stop. He said, uh, for the assembly of God, church of God and Christ, he want all these people to have the spirit of God. Pastors need to be the spirit of God. Methodists need the spirit of God. Catholics need the spirit of God. Episcopalian needs the spirit of God. Oh, Lutheran needs the spirit of God. We all need the spirit of God. Amen. Yeah. And ain't none of us, hallelujah, got a pet no longer ghost. 
Therefore, you're going to hear some people that say they're Catholic and they say, I spoke in tongues too, yeah. You're going to hear somebody say they're Baptist and they spoke in tongues, yeah, I spoke in tongues too, yes, Lord, I spoke in tongues. Methodists, they're going to say they spoke in tongues too. Now, they might need the standard to come and back them up a little bit. They might need to hang around some people that got the Holy Ghost and get their understanding of the Word of God a little bit more clearly than the God, God can expound the Word of God more clearly. But they still That's sometimes right, get it. That's right. That's right. And they need to see that parts of heaven. I don't want us to ever think that we the only one saved. That we the only one that hear from God. That we the only one God can talk to. Last I checked in these, you read Acts chapter 10. Yeah. The Lord appeared to the angel to talk to him. Yeah. He said an angel, he had a vision. An angel, he just said an angel. The Lord has spoke to kings in dreams that had no relation with God. Number one, we can't limit God, and we can't tell God what to do. That's right. He tells us what to do. We can't tell God he's out of order, but we can definitely get out of order with God. Come on. I repeat, we can't tell God that he's out of order, but we can quickly get out of order with him. Amen? Hallelujah. Ain't God good. Amen? Amen. So you see the importance of having the Holy Ghost? He want all his people to have it. He want all the folk to have it. He want the people who want your job, if they want it, he want them to have it too. If they want it. Some of them don't want it. Some of them say, we don't teach that in our church. If I got a slop in the mouth, I ain't going to have it. What problem? You might not get it then. You gotta... See, you the type of person that need to slop in the mouth. If I got a bucket shot, I ain't going to get it. You probably... See, when you're thinking like that, you the person that need the bucket shot. Y'all don't, you don't understand. If you ever got that mindset that I don't need to do this, you probably don't want to need to do that. Right. If I need to be loud like Pastor John, they're going to get the Holy Ghost. You probably need to be loud like Pastor John. <laughs> Let's go back to the Word of God. He's coming for out being real meek and quiet until you get that mic in his hand. <laughs> well, you need the Holy Ghost. That's all I got to say to you. John chapter 6 and verse number 63. It said, it is the spirit that quickened it. This flesh profits nothing. Your flesh. Some of us come this, in this earth in pretty, in pretty cases. Some of us in average cases. Some of us is less than average cases. But they're only cases, baby. Don't ever let the devil deceive you. Yeah. There's an expiration date on this case. Yeah. And ain't nothing special about your case. Your case ain't better than my case. And my case ain't better than your case. They're going to stretch all these cases out in the casting one day. Jesus. And let the Lord come back. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Am I not correct? Amen. It is the spirit that quaked it. This flesh, my flesh, your flesh, our flesh ain't profiting nothing. So what you think in your flesh don't mean nothing? You just in the flesh. See, the Spirit of God wants to break us out of the flesh if we let it. Yeah. But if you want to stay in the flesh, the Lord going to let you stay right there in the flesh. Y'all, yeah. can I be real? I've I, 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 I been in churches where people have got somebody by the hand and grab them and palm them up to the altar. It's good to do that, but can I tell you something? If the Spirit of God got to grab you by the hand and pull you to the altar, yeah. something wrong with you. You so much in the flesh, you on your way to Hades. Because God, the Bible, last I check it, said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. I've not used force. I've called and no man regarded. I've stretched out my hand, I paraphrase, no man else. See, the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. The Holy Ghost don't make you do nothing. You can sit back in your chair like a lump on the log. Yeah, they talking to me. I'm on. The devil is a lie. He's getting up on my seat. I ain't gonna look crazy in front of all them folks. Sit right there in your chair. Jesus. Baby, you sit right there in your chair. And on judgment day, and you gotta stand before God 
and then you come into the presence of God and you ain't got your right garment on the Holy Ghost. Well, then I ain't know nobody told me. All the times you came to church, you sit down like a lump on the log. Didn't want to humble yourself. Didn't want to cry out to God. Hallelujah. Keep reading, please, from verse 63. 64. Read verse 64. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not. Is that John 6 and verse 60, 64? Yes, sir. Keep reading. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. Yes. And he said, Therefore I said, I said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it was given unto him of my Father. Yes. From that time, Many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. When you start talking about the Spirit, people get offended. You start talking about the Holy Ghost, people get offended. Now, he ain't talking about the Holy Ghost right there. But I'm just trying to say, you can say things to people that offend them in church. Yes. All these folks are following Jesus until they said something they didn't. He said something to them that they didn't understand. Yes. Some of them never went to him and asked him what he meant. Come on now. They just left. Yes. People are so fickle. They won't even ask you what you meant by what you said. They're just going to leave you. And I believe all the folks that love Jesus, they got to stand before God and give an account on judgment day. Let's go to the word God. Let's go to Jeremiah 23 and verse number 9. Dealing with that spirit. The importance of having the Holy Ghost. You can see the Holy Ghost is going to lead and guide you, baby. Some things you ain't going to say if you're part of the auction of the spirit. And God is always a God of order. I ain't going to rebuke my bishop. I won't rebuke Bishop Jones upon the spirit. Amen? Gotta be careful. Let's go to the word of God. Jeremiah 23 and verse number 9. Amen? See what the word of God says. Mine heart within me is broken. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. Yes. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man. What? I'm like a drunk man. Did you not know when y'all shake in the church and jerk in the church, some folks poke fun of that. If I gotta do all that shaking and all that jerking, look at them. They on camera shaking like a leaf. What the, read the, what the prophet say now? I am like a drunken man. And like a man whom wine have overcome because of the Lord. I'm sorry, I never had the privilege of being drunk out of wine. I never had that privilege. When I was 15, 14, 15 years old, my cousin used to dip snuff. They used to dip that snuff in their mouth. I'm, sorry, I'm from the country, y'all. I'm telling y'all. And I, I got bold enough. I banned up one day. Give me some of that snuff. I never forget it. My aunt had fixed some good, delicious red beans and rice. And I ate red beans and rice and cornbread. I was over at the house eating. I ate a piece of chicken. The chicken was so good. Give me a piece of that stuff. <laughs> in my mouth. They up there, they doing their mouth and they spit it out. Mm. They, they know how to sip that, spit that juice out. I made a mistake and I drank that juice. I that juice. The world starts spinning around. <laughs> And it wasn't a holy gun. All of a sudden, I was on their front porch, and I spent off their front porch onto my back. Got up and thought, throwing up all over the place. And I said, if this is what drunk means, I don't want no part of it. So, but guess what? I couldn't walk straight. I was scolded back to y'all. I was drunk off. You know if I get drunk, I was scolded back. I can't have no real stuff. <laughs> Him. But the Bible says he was like a drunk man. You don't see too many drunk men and women walking straight. One of the sobriety tests. Only thing Paul is going to do is stop him walking a straight line. And they think they're walking straight. But they're drunk as a skunk. When the spirit get on us sometimes, we sometimes shake. Some of us get a little drunk in the spirit. That's all good, y'all. 
Don't let nobody make you feel ashamed because you're drunk in the spirit. Don't let nobody make you feel ashamed because you jump and shout and you shake a little bit. See, the person that's making fun of you, they need to be up there shaking just like you. Come on, pal. They be shaking like a leaf on a tree just like you. Some of them need the Holy Ghost that to shake them real good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, go to Acts chapter 2, verse number 13 through 15. Well, we're going to start with verse 1. Dealing with that Holy Ghost. Look out, start with verse 1. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Please read. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Yes. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven uh -huh. as of a rushing mighty wind. Uh -huh. Amen. And it Keep filled going. all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Yes. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So when the Holy Ghost came upon them, they began to speak in another language. Some people say they got the Holy Ghost because they feel a, a, a feeling to go down their spine. I feel something go down my spine. You know, it might be the Holy Ghost may be on you. I'm not going to say it ain't on you. But the sign that you was in fear with the Holy Ghost is that you speak with tongues. Yes. Out of your bed it shall flow rivers of living water. Amen? Amen. 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 Keep reading, please. Now when this was noise about, I'm sorry, five, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Yes, 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 keep reading. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galatians? Keep reading. And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? The Parthians, the Medes, and the Elamites, and the dwellers of Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, and Egypt, in Egypt, and in parts of Libya, and Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes, Cretes, Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Keep reading. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mock and said, these men are full of new wine. Wait a minute. These men are drunk. They're full of new wine. They're drunk. That's why they're babbling and all this kind of stuff. And drunk people, they may have been doing a little bit more. They may have been moving a little bit. I don't know. It just said they would look like they drunk. Yes. Other people. There were more than one person. Other people. Others was doing that. Several people probably thought they were drunk and out of their mind. Keep reading, please. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Nine o'clock in the morning. Keep reading. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Mm. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Yes, Lord. And your young wait, men. Wait, wait. I gotta stop you. How much, how much flesh you gonna pour out of the spirit of All flesh. All colors, all nationalities, Amen. all races, Amen. all people. Yes. I'm gonna pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. Somebody needs some spirit poured out upon them. Amen. Somebody in here today need to be drunk as a skunk. Yes. I, I just wish you just get into it and just feel that. Anybody ever been high in the spirit and just feel like you was just about to float away? Oh, yeah. Ooh, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. That's about to make me high. The Lord like to me that. I like to me that. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes you just got to get it. Just jump in and get into the spirit, baby. Just jump in and get, get wet in the spirit. Just let that spirit soak you today. Watch me all over with the Holy Ghost, Lord. Upon me, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that God put a shaking and knowing on us today. Come on. I, I pray that God move in this place today and we just don't leave until we get touched by God. Let's stay in church, church and we get down like drunk. So you've been missing the glow, right? So you've been missing the glow, right? Let's get drunk as a scum today. 
Devil been putting the glove on your back. Come on up here and get drunk in the spirit. Hang on. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep reading, please. And I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and upon my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call, call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You you gotta, wait a minute. You, you got to humble yourself and call on God. That's right. You got to humble yourself and call on God. Yeah. I can't make you call on Jesus. Yes, Amen? Amen. You got to do it yourself. Yes. It's a free will offering. Keep reading, please. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Now, we're not going to read all of this. We're going to drop down to Acts 38. Don't drop down to Acts chapter number. So that he preached Christ to them. Right. He preached Jesus to them. Amen. And what's going to happen next? Verse number 30, 37. 37. Now, when, this, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You have to repent. You have to repent. You do not, repentance is not just a head knowledge thing. It's actually turning. Repentance means you used to go to the club and then you go an about face, now I'm going to church. That's right. You used to go to the bed of this and the bed of that. Go, you used to go get high on this and get high on that. And then all of a sudden, now you're going to the house of God. You change your way. Repentance is from the Greek word metanoia. It means to come to God with godly sorrow and then change. Yes. It's not just saying I'm sorry, but now it is changing. And that is the mandate that's upon this church. We're telling people this year they need to change. You can't make it to heaven and stay the same. There's no salvation without repentance. No such thing. Hallelujah. Keep reading, please. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Yes. I love that. I love that. I love that. Because it tells number one, you need to repent. You need to believe that Jesus Christ died. They preached Jesus to him. Then he rose from the grave on the third day, number one. Number two, you need to repent. Come to God with godly sorrow and say, God, I'm sorry for what I've done. Number three, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. That's the Bible. We read straight up out the word of God. And next after that, you need the Holy Ghost. That tongue-talking Holy Ghost. That living right Holy Ghost. No cussing, no fussing, no lying, no cheating Holy Ghost. You need that Holy Ghost power. And number five, continue in the apostles' teaching. Yeah. As recording the word of God. Amen? Amen. More than just tongue, baby. If you think that we come up to church just to speak in tongues and, and buck and shout and, and, and to dance to our dance, baby, it's more to it than that. That's just the manifestation of heaven. That's just the outward expression of heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. We wrapping it up. Only got a couple more scriptures. Luke chapter number eleven and verse number nine through thirteen. Probably got about four more scriptures. Hopefully, we'll be done. Luke chapter number eleven and verse nine through thirteen. Amen. Somebody say, "I need the whole. I want the Holy Ghost, Pastor. How do I get the Holy Ghost? You got to ask. And you need to be willing to forsake whatever it takes to get it. Whatever the Lord tell you to do. Now, I ain't gonna tell nobody to, to spin on their head. But sometimes we have to give up stuff. Amen. We got to live right. Amen? Because the Bible says he gives the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit. You say Holy Spirit, I say Holy Ghost. You say Holy Spirit, no, but I say Holy Ghost. Same thing. Amen? But sometimes you have to obey what God tells you to do. He gives the Holy Spirit to those that obey him. 
You got to have an obedient heart. You can't say, I want the Holy Ghost, and then I plan on going out here and drinking me a fifth or whatever you drink after I leave church. Hope it's a fifth of water. Is that such a thing of water? Fifth of water? That's the only thing. Of, that's a fifth of wine. Anyway, hope you don't drink that. But you can't say, I want the Holy Spirit, a Holy Ghost, and say, I'm going to go out there and live like the devil. That's right. I left my shack daddy at the hotel on the belt line. And I want the Holy Ghost now, you know, got to get back, pastor, finish up, got to get busy now, got to get busy. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't have both of them. You can't have the world and have God too. Keep reading. Luke chapter, let go if you can read that. Luke chapter 11 and verse 9. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find, knock. And it shall be open unto you. For everyone that asketh receive it, and he that seeketh find it. And to him that knocketh it shall be open. Yes. If a man shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, mm -hmm. will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Yes. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Mm -hmm. If ye then been evil, and know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? You got to ask, and he'll give it. God don't want to hold back the Holy Ghost from nobody. If you, upon the sound of my voice, and you don't have the Holy Ghost, evident by speaking in another language as the Spirit of God give others, he can give it to you today if you let him. But you got to be willing, when you're dealing with God, you can't say, I'm going to come for a five-minute prayer, and if God don't move in five minutes, I'm gone. Yes. See, we don't believe in tearing, but we believe in seeking God for the Holy yes. Spirit. Yes. Yes. See, the day of tearing for the Holy Ghost, it, and let me tell y'all what tearing really is. Can I tell y'all what tearing It means to wait on God. Yes. As you're seeking, you're waiting on God to move. Yes. God ain't like man. This is not McDonald's. Yes. You can't... Expect a five-minute prayer to have uh, sometimes to have eternal results. Now he's able to give it to you in five minutes, but as long as he set the standard and not you. I repeat, he's able to give it to you in five minutes if you let him set the standard yeah. and not you. If you really want to say, I want to be saved, you need to have this mindset, I ain't leaving it until I got it. Amen. If it take me three hours. If it take me four hours, I'm not leaving till I'm speaking in tongues. Yes, yes. If God see that determination in you and you're sincere yes, about it, yes. you've turned from your sin and turned from stuff of the world, he's able to give you the Holy Ghost today. Yes, yes, but please, I beg you, don't put God on time schedule. And sometimes we got to get out of our comfort zone. Yes, oh, Lord, here we go. Yes. Pastor, I'm too, I'm too shy to see God for the Holy Ghost. I'm too, I'm too, I'm too shy to see God for the Holy Ghost. I, I can't say Jesus. Why can't you say Jesus? There's something wrong? You got speech impediment? Are you mute? What's the problem? You can't say Jesus. I can't say Jesus like y'all say Jesus. Why don't you just say Jesus how you say Jesus? Yes, yes, yes. Don't try to be like me. Just be like you. And I've seen so many people talking about. You know, I, you know, I've been to church with people who's very, very cool, calm, collective. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If that's you, that's your business. But when you come in and reaching out for the Holy Ghost, is it Psalms chapter 78 round by verse 10? Let's turn that real quick. I think it's Psalms 78 verse 10. Open up your mouth wide. He'll feel it. You got to open up that mouth wide. I'm, I'm going to scare some people right now. You, you can say it like this. Jesus. Is that on my mind? How about this? Jesus. Is that why? How about this? Jesus. That's wild, right? Go a lot of that. And I'm a quiet. Y'all know I'm a quiet person. But I know in my mouth I got the ability to go up wide and loud. Jesus, help me! If I can do it, you can do it too. 
Sometimes you got to get out of your comfort zone to get something from the Lord. You're going to stay right where you are until you reach out to God from your heart with all your might. The same choir people, they go to uh, Alabama game or Auburn game. That's right. They'll, they'll jump up and knock popcorn on you and yeah. spill the drink over you. They got a touchdown and some of them cuss and spit and throw alcohol over here and over there. But see, they, they too they too reserved to, to lift their hands in church and say thank you, Lord. Oh, on judgment day, when I go to the grave, I don't want to be the midst of shout, a jump, a jerk, a shake, because dead folks can't do that. I want it all. I'm, I'm greedy when it comes to the spirit. I want Come on, it all. Read it for me, Lake Lady Jones. Is it 78 verse 10? 81. Go ahead and read it. Psalms 81 10. Yes, 81 and 10. Yes. I am the Lord thy God. Yes. Which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Yes. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. Psalms 81 and 10 says, Open thy mouth wide and I'll fill it. Get out of your comfort zone today and open up your mouth wide. He'll fill it. Amen. Did we finish up Luke chapter number 9 through 13? Amen. He's going to give you the Holy Ghost if you ask for it. Amen. Last come scripture, Romans chapter 8, then we're going to Galatians, then we're done. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Amen. The importance of being filled with the Spirit of God. It's more than a jump, more than a shout. This is teaching today. Ain't a lot of screaming and hollering at you. This is just teaching y'all. Let you know it's important to have it. God wants you to have it. He ain't going to hold it back from you. If you want it, he will give it to you. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter, I mean, Romans chapter 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of as God. As are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. They are the sons of God. Keep reading. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Yes. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Yes. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Okay, drop down to verse number 26. Verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Oh, wait a minute. Sometimes some of your prayers need to be in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. It don't hurt you to pray in tongues. Because you don't know what you're praying for anyway sometimes. You're praying for a red car. God praying for you not to get in debt. <laughs> I'm praying for a brand new red car with rims on it. God said, I'm praying. The Spirit said, Lord, please don't let him get in debt. So you don't know how to pray for as you are sometimes. Yes. Amen. Keep reading, please. But the Spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Okay, this one, it could be a black car, it could be a red car, it could be a purple car. <laughs> Keep reading, please. It don't matter. He that searches the hearts, knowing what is the mind of the Spirit, because he make an intercession for the saints, According to the will of God. The Spirit making an intercession to us according to the will of God. See, that's why it's important to have the Holy Ghost, because you need to pray in the Holy Ghost, because you're praying the will of God, not your own will. See, when you're speaking with your mouth, you're praying what you want. But when you're praying in the Holy Ghost, you're praying what God wants. And what your spirit knows you really need. That's why you need to pray in the Holy Ghost. That's somebody here today that you ain't been praying in the Spirit, you ain't been praying in the Holy Ghost. When the last time you prayed in the Holy Ghost? Don't tell me. I don't want to know. I don't want to embarrass you. I prayed back in 2016. Baby, you need to pray every day. Some of us need to pray every day in the Spirit. Every single day in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Hallelujah. How I know you pray and you ain't praying in the Spirit? Your action. If you ain't praying in the Holy Ghost, your action going to be off. All right, y'all look at me like that. I promise you, I got the book to bag me up. Keep reading, please. Did you read verse 28? I'll wait to 28. Please. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. After you prayed in the Holy Ghost, after you prayed in the Spirit, after the Spirit of made intercession with you, then all things work together for your good. Yeah, yeah, that's right. After you prayed in the Holy Ghost with groaning that cannot be understood, after you prayed in the Spirit, then all things work together for you. We like to say, Thing work together when you good with them to call the law. No, baby, you gotta pray in the Holy Ghost too. You gotta make promises in the spirit that cannot be understood. Understood by man's ears. Somebody in the flesh, damn they're praying the Holy Ghost. 
I could want some of y'all out, but I ain't gonna put you on blast. Okay, shall we go on? Galatians chapter number five, verse sixteen. Galatians chapter five, verse sixteen. This I say then: Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you're walking in the Holy Ghost, in the Spirit, you ain't gonna fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's sort of difficult to backslide when you walk in the Spirit. But when you get out the Spirit, man, backsliding is easy. You get to sort of slide. Y'all think it's a joke, eh? You can slide over there. When you get out the Spirit, you can slide over there. See, that's why it's important to stay in the Spirit. You cannot afford to be disconnected from the Spirit of God. It can't. I already know you're going to backslide. I ain't, no, ain't got to be in the prophetic. I know you're going to backslide when you get out of the spirit. If you stay out the spirit long enough, you're going to fall. Yeah, amen. Because you're not connected to the vine. So if you're the only one that's out of the spirit, please tell them, come on, baby, get back in spirit. Come on, get back in spirit. Before you fall. Chapter number, verse 25, and we're done. If we live in the spirit... Let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. All his bow, all eyes closed.